<coughs> Good evening, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day, enjoying life, living life, and loving life. I uh, want to talk to people about some poker tonight, but first I want to do a little showing off. I'm moving up in the world, and I got my diplomatic class going on. You can see I got my, my four little white flags. And the two up here on the handlebars. Got my, got my declaration of private property. Got to get me that military thing now. The black and white military private property thing. Got that going on and we got three languages symbolically. That say mine, not yours. <laughs> So anyway, um, let's get to this poker thing. Because I don't know how many of you guys play poker, but I love poker. I really do. Um, been playing poker since I was a little boy. Um, I've even played a lot of um, cash poker out here at the local casino. And before I go any further, I want to tell you my own personal story about the local casino. Um, because the last time I played, I'm telling you what, something told me I needed to get up from those tables and leave and don't come back. The cash game, I spent good money out of my pocket. And I'd been playing for, oh, probably about an hour is coming up on the first break before I actually got any kind of a hand to play. So I didn't put any much into the pot, had to play, pay the ante every hand. You know what an ante is, you gotta pay a percentage no matter whether you play or not. And then when the deal comes around, you've got the big blind, which is a full table bet. Um, generally they start out like 20, 20 chip blinds. Um, and so you got the big blind that's 20 chips and then the little blind that's 10 chips. And then of course your ante, which is 10% of that big blind. So your ante on the 20, 20 chip blinds would be two chips. And then as time goes on, the antes build up and the, and the, uh, the uh, big and small blinds build up. Well, anyway, I, like I said, I'm sitting there and hadn't really invested much, but I didn't have the full stack. But I had two clubs in my hand, a queen and a nine. And I'm playing seven card um, poker, seven card stud, or uh, seven card draw. So you end up with two, or uh, it's called Texas Hold'em. So you start out with two, two cards. Everybody starts out with two cards and you do your round of betting. And those that stick around, you get to see what's called the street. And that's the first, second, and third cards that are played up on the, on the board. And then you get to see the fourth street, which is called the turn. And then you get to see the fifth street, which is called the river. So I've got my two hole cards. Those are the two cards that are dealt me. And I've got a queen and a nine of clubs. Now the first set of streets that comes up, the first, second, and third, comes up ace, king, jack. Okay? Now I've got what's called a nut flush because I've got the queen in my hand and the ace and king are the only two that can beat it on the board plus the jack sitting there. So I've got five clubs with the highest club to, to take the club flush. I need the 10 of clubs to get a royal flush. I'm going all in because at that point I've got top. Holy cow, that's a big one. The only hand that can beat me is a full house, four of a kind, or royal flush. And like I said, I've got the nut flush, so that means I'm the only one that can possibly get the royal flush. So I go all in, and I got two people that call me. Now, two people that called me, saw the three clubs on the board, knew that I absolutely had to have gone all in because I had the club flush. They're both sitting there with a queen and a jack in their hand. Now, mind you, I told you I've got a queen in my hand, the queen of clubs, and there's a jack of clubs on the board. 
that makes three queens and three jacks. Now, as I told you, the only hand that can beat me is a full house, four of a kind, or a royal flush. I'm the only one that can have the four or a royal flush, so they can only possibly get four of a kind, and neither one of them can do that because I've got a queen and a jack, and there's a jack on the board, and they're both sharing a queen and a jack. So there's only one queen and jack left. They could possibly only get a full house. So now we've got two cards to draw, and they both have to be that last queen and the last jack to be able, either one of them, to beat me. Guess what? It came up queen and jack. They both hit the full house, um, jacks full of queens, to beat my <laughs> nut flush. God, those are loud tonight. No wonder the dog won't come out and go to the bathroom. So anyway, the point in this is that if you're going to sit down at a poker table, you better know how to play poker, and you better understand that the odds are still you can lose. Odds are still you can lose. The next thing I want to point out is after I quit playing the live casino, I continued playing the online casinos, but only because they're free play chips. So I don't really have any investment in them. Now, this venue is a little bit different because this venue, like I said, this venue is free play chips. So what you have on the free venue play chip tables online is we have people that are understanding that the chips have no value. So what they're doing is they're going in and they're playing bingo on a poker table by just sitting there and going all in. And it doesn't matter if they've got a 7-4 offsuit or not. They're going to go all in because they understand there's really no value. Okay? Now understand this is what you're doing in life. This is what you're doing in life is putting value to those Federal Reserve notes when they have no value. So, are we going to continue to play this game of poker? Even though we know there's all kinds of people out there playing bingo when it's supposed to be poker. Getting away with it, with bullshit. Are we going to keep giving that fictional Federal Reserve notes value? Are we going to keep giving this fictional system value? Are we going to keep playing that poker knowing that even though we know how to play the game and we play it the damnedest best we can, we can still be beat because we're playing on some kind of future odds? See, that's what poker is all about. See, you don't know what the final result is until you see the next future event. So rather than going all in on the flop, the first three streets, I could have just put 20 out there. Odds are, they'd have probably called. One of them might have raised. Correct. Justin Nolan just mentioned, do you know if you're using any one of their dead instruments? You're not actually making any kind of a payment. So when they ask you for the, for the uh, fines, fees, and penalties down at the court, they're asking you to make it. What they're doing is they're asking you to make a, a payment with a dead instrument, which is known to be a promissory note. And we know every last one of them is some type of promissory note because the United States is obligated for all debts, public and private. And all debts are determined by the debt instruments that this particular corporate company uses. Now, if you go to the private side, you can use those same similar kinds of debt instruments, but you got to do it with your own substance. You got to have your own backing. 
this is something that the banks don't have. You know, this is, see, see, in this game, the banks are the dealers. The banks, the attorneys, those are the dealers. When you sit down at the game, you're, you're, you're paying ante. You're, you're going to go up and you're going to re register your car, okay? You're paying, the, you're paying the registration fee to enter the tournament, okay? On the other side, the dealer's taking your money. He's acquisitioning your money. And he's going to give you some chips that at that time don't have any value. Okay? He's already got your money, and it doesn't matter how many chips you walk away from that table with. You either have to have all of them or none of them. And if you have all of them, then you only get a certain prize amount. You get a reward. See? <laughs> And that's the same thing they're doing in these courts. They're playing a gambling game, and they're waiting for the reward at the very final event. And everybody's making wagers along the way, and they're betting, and they're paying the ante, every hand. And then you're handing over this document, and they're reading it, and they're, they're going, okay, let's off the bet. Boom! Hand back another document with a bigger threat. Do you really want to play this poker game while they're playing bingo? Understand this stuff, people. The only way you're going to win is by having your own substance. That way you can put it out there, out there against their false substance. See, if you build a trust, this Sedicate trust everybody's worried about, and it's backed by the Federal Reserve Note. And everybody wants to go claim it. Let's go get that certificate of live birth and authenticate it. <clears throat> There's no body to the trust. How can you authenticate it? You're trying to authenticate a fiction. If you want to build a true trust, a true Sedicate trust, which means that the son is the inheritance of the father and the son. The guy that holds the inheritance as the father, he holds the inheritance of his son. And as the son, he holds the inheritance of his father. And as the father of a son, he plays the same role as his father holding inheritance of him. That's what a Sedicate trust is. And a valid Sedicate trust has substance in it. But you put the substance in it, you draw up the trust, you're the executor taking on the trust or duties and assigning the trustee and beneficiaries. In this thing that they've established, garnishing Federal Reserve notes and making everybody employees so they can use those Federal Reserve notes and say that they're taxable. Doesn't make any sense, does it? So I hope you guys really start thinking about this. It's, it's no game. And they're simply playing a game. Point it out. And I understand a lot of you guys are stuck in this fictional finance system. And that's why I urge you, um, get out there and start getting your substance. Um, get your land patents done up correctly. All you homeowners that think that you're, you're, you're sitting there afraid that they're going to come foreclose on you or you've got mortgages and stuff. The mortgage is fiction. The mortgage is a second contract on top of the original loan all they've done is exceeded their powers of attorney and you haven't grasped that yet when you when you sign that that social security uh, application you signed over um, powers of attorney and assignments and stuff like that and you have to rescind those kind of things as long as you keep participating in it then you're playing their poker game and they're playing bingo because they know there's no consequences. They're just going to go get another stack of free chips. Fuck, they're the dealer. They're inviting you to their table. They get to pick the game, and yeah, they'll pass the deal. But it's their deck, too. It's their game. So when other people on the table want to sit there and start playing bingo, uh, bingo on a poker table, it doesn't matter to them. 
They're the house. They're going to rake from those bingo players too. And if that bingo player loses, it's just going to go to somebody else. So, I really need you guys to think about this. If you're going to play uh, poker, understand it. If you're going to live life, live life and quit playing the games. There are all kinds of things that you can start doing. Small things here and there. We can start... Um, we can start mimicking the Amish. In a lot of things, they do. You see the Amish taking their, taking their pregnant women to the hospitals to have babies? Nope. You see CPS going in and saying, well, we don't believe in your lifestyle and raising them without, without electricity? Nope. They know something. And it works. And they didn't have to do anything about changing their status. Just like Jesus did, all he did was prove it. That's all you guys didn't you do. Prove your status. They've got you locked up in this monopoly of currency, and it's a military operation. The banks are operated by communists, and they allow lawyers to operate the courts, which are also considered banks. They're corporate entities. The only way, even, even in this common law, you know, um, I want to point something out to you. The common law doesn't exist in a court. George Washington held his court on his front lawn. He didn't need to go to damn courthouse. He did it in the original jurisdiction. The true house of the common man. The true house of the common man as a steward, a house ward of the creator who created the land, air, and water and gave you dominion over that and all the creatures therein. Not to abuse, but to go forth and prosper and be abundant. Prosperity in abundance. He gives everything freely, including his will. Now, if you want to go sit down at a poker table by registering your automobile, you go ahead and do that. You want to learn how to how to travel without having to put your your automobile up as stakes in a poker game. Learn the learn the rules of the game and find out that the certification is false. My intent is not to use it 50% of its use as trade or business on the public roadways as a lessee in the state as lessor. I'm sorry, I've got to tell you, it's false. And you don't have any records either. See, you say that I'm going to commit commerce on the roadways and that there's supposed to be records of this com commercial action in order to be able to place those taxes. Now, you tax the registration. You tax it every year saying I have to re-register it every year. Um, then you tax the fuel that I have to, that I use to op, to, to run it. <coughs> but you don't have any other records. You don't have any shipping labels. You don't have any birthing certificates. Say that I pulled up into port and dropped a shipment off. You don't have any inventories. You don't have any orders. You don't have any receipts. Hell, the first time I'm supplied any kind of orders is this some some citation, traffic citation, redundant, a commercial citation. Traffic means commerce. Why why are you using these this fictional language, and trying to convince me that I need to get some kind of license? Or that I need to register something in some kind of game of yours? 
I'm not playing your damn game anymore. I'm going to try to teach people how to quit playing that game. See, you all have a right to develop your own private trusts and barter with each other singly without third-party officious intermeddlers, third-party interveners, people that are creating at, or, or performing acts of mixed war upon people. Persons performing acts of mixed war upon people. Those acts of mixed war are the words that they use against you and the enforcement of standing armies. And only, only when you start learning the words will you understand how they're using them against you and how to turn them back to their correctness and say, uh-uh, wrong rules. I don't play those games. Genesis 17, chapter 1. I am God Almighty. So long as thou follow my way, thou shalt be blameless. Oh, yeah, so officious intermeddlers. They like that one too, David. Call them an in officious intermeddler and see how they respond. Tell them you will hold them liable in their personal and private capacities uh, as third-party interveners and officious intermeddlers. They will fucking shit their head out their ass and start taking a look. Just a matter of the language. So, I urge you, keep, you people to think about this. If you really want to keep gambling your children's future, you're the reason that, that it says we pay for our father's sins. Start doing things now, even if it's just little things like researching. Going into these courtrooms and watching. See how they treat people. If you've never been in a courtroom, my God, go in there. Find out the process when you go, walk through that fucking metal detector and they, they basically strip you. And if that thing goes off, oh my God, they start shoving things up your ass. And they call that freedom. In a public venue, and you're going to accost me physically instead of financially, What's the cost? Oh, no, let's not go. Oh, no, let's not go there. Oh, my God, we're talking about assault. What's assault? Oh, my God. What's arrest? It certainly isn't resting. It's certainly going to cost you. So... If you're really going to gamble, you better know the rules of the game. And in order to know the rules of the game, you got to know the words. You're going to walk into these courts and you start using sweet juris, pro per, pro se. They know you don't know what you're talking about because you're going to try to use their language. I'm sorry, but I'm a viker of Christ. I'm a viker of my Lord. I will share his word. In beginning was word. So, all this babble that they bring upon you, again, like I said, all, so many different words. And you think they're words and they're terms. Terms and conditions of the words in the contract. That's what a contract is. It's conditions that have been put on a word that now make a term that can be contracted back down to its original word by taking away the conditions that were originally put on it, prefixes and suffixes. If you take the word speed, you know you're talking about something relevant to time and space, distance and, and time. If you use the word speeding, like I got a ticket for speeding, you've just used a incomplete sentence that ends up with a dangling participle verb. However, if you got a ticket for excessive speed, that would be correct. It's order, the use of the words, how they're constructed, everything. And you need to start learning this stuff and quit gambling your life away.
because that's what you're doing. You're playing in this fictional finance system. Finance means debt. Debt means sin. And you're going ahead and just sinning and then claiming somebody else owes you a debt too. Did you not just hear me? Love thy neighbor as they love thyself. So if I love thy neighbor as I love thyself, and that's one of the ways I'm supposed to follow according to my almighty God so I may be blameless, then what am I doing blaming other people? Shouldn't I look at myself for my own blame and understand that I know not what I do and therefore I shall perish for lack of knowledge and therefore I should ask so I may receive so when anybody tries to pull me into any situation and start slinging words that I don't recognize because I don't cognize them to begin with, so how can I recognize them? Um, sorry, don't know what to tell you. So when somebody sits there and says, well, what's your name? And I tell them I don't have a name. And he looks at me and says, well, everybody's got a name. I said, no, all persons have a name, and all men have a true calling, and I've been called Keith all my life. It is only when you reduce that calling and put it on a paper that it is now known as some kind of verb, or excuse me, some kind of a noun, which is, can be a concrete noun, a pronoun, a abstract noun, several different kinds of nouns and it and depending on how you put it down whether it be a name or a descriptor or a word that's had both a prefix and suffix put on it such as defendant which is totally an abstract noun which means it's not real at all because it's now been changed from a noun to a transitive verb meaning that an action has taken place because the original word was an act, it was a verb. It's now been changed into a noun by adding fend, the original word, the original verb, the action of fending for oneself, putting a prefix on it calling D, meaning to take away the ability to fend or having lost the ability to fend, and then adding the suffix ant onto it, meaning it is a time period that has already happened, and therefore defendant is now changed from a verb to an abstract noun. Not the original sense that it was first parlayed in, which is my creation of a calling of Keith, which can be transcribed in many different symbols, in many different languages, so you better get it right. Let's be concise about it. So when a person has a name, it's the person that has a name. And it's the person named in the instrument that is the debtor, and as a person, a United States corporate person of the United States, known as a United States citizen, and the authorized representative, which is a pronoun, is the one that gives the authorized signature, with his, which is a Another type of transitive verb, authorized signature is an act. And he is not liable for the person in the instrument for the signature on the instrument. He is the one giving the action. He is the live being that creates that mark. So even yourself needs to make sure you make that mark correct. If you're using a foreign language known as cursive English, then you're not using concise English. And therefore have denounced the truth of the words, 
even further and are at fault yourself. You don't blame others, you look at yourself. So if you really want to start learning how to fix this stuff, start with a signature, learn what it's all about, and start learning how to use UCC 1-308. Start learning how to use 12 uh, USC 411. Start asking about these things in qualifying that signature, qualifying that mark. Understand things about pen, uh, pen names. Tom Sawyer was written under a pen name. All the stories that Mark Twain was a pen name for Samuel Clemens. And it protected all of his literal works. Prince used a symbol. He quit using a name and went to a symbol to clarify things. And that's what we need to do. Understand it's our own fault, and we just need to start understanding what that fault is, how to correct it, and be concise about it. So, think about this stuff, people. It really is a big poker game. It really is. And the better you learn that, the better you're able to hold that poker face of truth and tell them you know what the real cards are, <laughs> and you're going all in. How about you? You want to go all in? You want to put your bond up against mine? See, your bond doesn't have any real backing. It's, it's backed up by Federal Reserve notes, Mr. Uh, badge number 1234. Oh, my honor. <laughs> your bond number? That's held at the uh, county treasurer or county administrators. Uh, Supreme Court, uh, your, your state uh, superior courts and stuff, that's held at Secretary of State. Your notaries, Secretary of State, you want to get these guys' bond numbers? Look them up. Start calling their bluff. Start going all in, but know how to do it. Educate yourself first. Do your research. Understand what the true set of K trust is all about. Because their set of K trust doesn't have a true body. It's all a fictional body based on Federal Reserve notes that are known to be zero value and like I said before zero value and they're used as the uh, uh, standard for world currency through the IMF which <laughs> regulates uh, national currencies for many other nations so if it's the standard and has no value then those other nations that have a supposed lesser value according to the Federal Reserve notes have even has zero value still. <laughs> Makes no sense, does it? So understand that the Sedicaid Trust is a, is a real, true, and valuable thing, and it does mean something. And if you look up that meaning, it's father's inheritance to his son, and his son in, uh, inherits his father. They're, they're, they're interchangeable, and that's why you pass that on inherently. Okay, it's called inheritance. And that's the basics of a true set of trust, but it has to have that true substance. It has to have, and understand this, um, a lot of people think gold has, has all this value and that that's, that's the, uh, the monetary system. Understand, silver has always been used as money. Gold has always been used as idolized, idolized things. Now, granted, Caesar put out gold coins. But silver has always been used as the main gold coin uh, of all value systems, all monetary systems. Think about that. And, and understand, again, like I said, if you're going to plop your money down on a table, understand if it's got real value or not and whether you're holding real value to it or not. Because if you're taking... Uh, $5,000 out to the casino to play a, a tournament with 10,000 people and they're <laughs> you're not likely going to make it and you could use that $5,000 Federal Reserve notes that that is still false um, to pay $5,000 of, uh, of 
to, to buy, buy $5,000 worth of silver, you might want to buy that silver first. <laughs> so, really think about this stuff, people. Because you can do that. They're allowing you a way to exchange those Federal Reserve notes dollar for dollar. You just got to know what to buy with them. Quit going out to the casino. Quit signing these checks ignorantly. Understand this stuff, people. You can, you can buy, you can buy gold and silver with Federal Reserve notes. Then do it. Start building your trust. <laughs> Get rid of these fucking birth certificates. <laughs> this fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. Think about this stuff, people. And remember, start riding in style. See these, these four flags? That's, you see them five stars on your, your passports and stuff for your diplomatic immunity? This shows that I travel in peace. I'm coming in peace, I'm gonna visit in peace, and I'm gonna leave in peace. In the meantime, it's private property. So, think about this stuff and realize you're the authority. You're the one making the decisions. And if you're making them based on the language that they've taught you, I urge you, I urge you to go back and unlearn your public education. Yeah, they taught you English in school, but they only taught you certain parts of it. And yeah, they touched on part, uh, dangling participles here or there. They touched on adverbs and transitive verbs, but they didn't go any further, and that's where they really should have. And since they didn't, I urge everybody, even if you got a high school diploma, I don't care if you went to college and, and, and became a, a, a major uh, uh, English lit major, I, I, I urge you to get involved in the education of the proper way to speak. proper way to speak to each other so that you don't have to worry about writing things down on a piece of paper to explain yourself. Anybody that, that needs to write something down on a piece of paper to explain something to me obviously doesn't understand it themselves. Otherwise, things are real short and concise really easy to understand. This eight million codes, why do you think they got eight million codes? They keep trying to correct shit and don't even know what they're correcting. You know our Congress, understand this people, our Congress takes all these laws and everything, these bills that are passed by the Senate and the House. Your monetary bills have to go through the, through the, through the uh, House of Representatives first. The Senate can take care of things like um, rights and, and things like that that don't have so much to do with finance. But all of your finance starts out with the House of Representatives. They pass a bill. They have to pass it on to the Senate so the Senate can look at it, review it, and pass it in its exact form. If the, if the Senate wants to make amendments, they can do so, but they have to pass it back to the House of Representatives. And this can go back and forth se several times until they finally agree on something. Once they agree on something, they put it before the Congress to pass. Once the Congress passes it, the Congress then hands it to a bunch of lawyers to proofread it, who then amend it further by adjusting certain conditions upon the words, changing conditions and terms, and then handing back and say, here you go, this is what you want. Doesn't sound too legit to me. Doesn't sound legit at all. And with eight million codes, do you think any one of them can understand them all? They're all just playing a game because they know, they know the stakes. I'm betting every last one of them, one of them that knows the stakes has their own true 
trust set up with substance because they've used those Federal Reserve notes to buy everything they could and put it in that trust. While everybody else believes they need to authenticate that birth certificate, take over that United States person and do this and do that and do this and do that. Oh, and let's do that 98, eight, uh, 98 uh, EIN thing or whatever, the 8 bin and the 8338. And let's not forget the W9 and I9 that I even talked about, but only did so because I have personal experience back when I was an independent contractor. But I have even since learned that if they have no authority, then I don't even have to worry about filling out their fucking forms. Duh. Same thing with the birth certificate. Who the fuck says I have to have a birth certificate? As far as I know, um, I don't even have to have a nativity. No, not anymore. All I know is truth. And my truth is I'm going to exist while I'm here. And I've heard a lot of things about a lot of people in the past. I've seen a lot of things about a lot of people in my own experiences. I've heard a lot of things about a lot of people that might happen in the future. Um, I know a lot of people might remember me after I'm gone. A lot of people might remember me for this thing or that thing. A lot of different reasons people might, might uh, remember me. Some people might not remember me at all. Some might want to forget me. And none of it really matters to me at all. Because all I care about is right fucking now. What is true now? And the truth is, nobody can make me sign a damn thing. And nobody can make you sign anything either. So if you're willingly going to sign things, I, un I again suggest you learn how to sign things. Start doing your research. There are different ways to sign a lot of things. I signed all my traffic citations, um, interference with official acts, uh, disobeying the uh, uh, lawful order, da-da-da-da. Signed them with UCC 1-308 and then just never went to court. Now, the last time I went to court, I was forced into court. Still gave no signatures, but I was still under contract because I still had that fucking Social Security uh, account. Imagine that. Um, but it's, it's just a matter of learning that there's different ways to sign things. You sign your checks. Um, talk to Jody Annan. I don't know if you're watching, Jody. Um, J-O-D-Y-A-N-N-A-N. -A -N -A -N. Um, check him out. Just ask him. Um, he's, got, he's got a lot of it. He's got a lot of experience um, signing his checks and stuff. Uh, I don't know what he's got for a bank account. I believe he switched to a private bank account, private business account. Um, all different kinds of questions you need to start asking um, to figure this out. When you do these loans, make sure you take those loans. Instead of, instead of letting that, uh, that loan officer force you into signing it right away without being able to look at it and read it, tell him you've got legal counsel that you need to... Uh, present this to um, in order to uh, proofread it to make sure that you're not going to be taken advantage of unfairly and that you're able to assert all of your rights as the principal investor. Understand this stuff, people. When you sign those loan documents, you're signing over powers of attorney. And so you really need to take those with you and read them and, re and, and proof them so that you can correct those areas where they've taken that power of attorney and cross them out, blue line them out with a blue ink pen, put a line right through them, and then write in, I maintain all, all durable powers of attorney in fact. All financial questions and concerns are to be sub submitted to myself. Something along those lines. But you need to correct these loan documents and understand how the title system works so that you can create land patents. See, when these, when these banks are doing these home loans, they have no business in real estate. And real estate has no business in banking. And what they're doing is creating deeds and titles and transferring those things when neither one of them has any business in property, private property property 
There, every every commercial institution is a public institution. Every last one of them. Um, they have to be registered through the uh, government to do business as a certain organization um, within the within the government, within the states, within your counties, within your cities. Um, if there's an international business corporation like IBM, Nike, things like that, they're they're on they're under contracts of the, the uh, international sale of goods, and so they have to abide by those international contracts. Um, your smaller corporations here locally that sell those goods, those are different. They're private um, warehousing, um, clearing houses, um, things like that. And you need to start understanding this stuff. There's so much of it can be solved just by understanding how you're signing all these documents. And what, what documents you're signing. Are you filling out their forms or are you creating your own titles and deeds and, and making them proper, um, creating your own boundaries um, in, the, in the realm of your private estate, um, doing things like your, your flags and your private, you know, if you've got private property, you're supposed to uh, um, place private property signs every so often along your, your uh, um, property line so people know it. Um, if you've got private property, you shouldn't have a mailbox on your house. You should have a post for the United States Post Service or Post Office so that they can deliver post to the box on the post instead of using the United States Postal Service and mail. Well, it's two different things, people. And, and symbolically, they, they mean exactly what they mean. A post is a post at the property line where the postman posts other people's private posts to yourself. Here on Facebook, what do we do? We post. What are we posting? We're posting a communication. The postman delivers a communication to a post. Same thing we're doing here. It's just using different venues and different formats of language. That's all it is. So you put your post at the at the property line, you put the numbers on the post, you put the box on top of the post, you put the last name, the family name on the box, and anything that goes in the box is private. And the number on the post is telling a public notif is giving a public notice of who's receiving post and on that post by the postmaster's servant. Every last bit of it means something, and you need to start learning these words. Like I said, defendant is an abstract noun. There's there's no such there's no no possible way um, you could ever convince me again that I'm a defendant because I could clearly explain to anybody, and if they have any questions, I would have no problem seeking counsel of, say, four, five, maybe six. Hell, let's make it 12, let's make it 13, so we have a full jury, ignorant motherfuckers, a full jury of uh, English lit majors. Oh, and let's, let's say we line up another whole, and that's for counsel, let's say we line up another whole jury um, as first-hand witnesses of, say, uh, some more English lit majors that will get on the... Yeah, yeah! Say we have another 12, 13-man jury that will, will get on the stand and testify to the exact same thing that I was counseled through uh, another 12, 13-man jury. Now we've got 25, 20, 24, 25, 26 people um, getting in front of a, another 12-man jury. <laughs> a jury of my peers because they can't be citizens. Now who do you imagine is going to win that game? You really want to put your house on it, buddy? Badge number one, two, three, four? Because I'm going all in.
I ain't playing your fucking poker bingo anymore, motherfuckers. Think about this stuff, people, and really learn it. Get it down and understand that's your power. Your power is truth, education, knowledge, pointing it out to them. Anyway, this ended up being a lot longer video than I had planned, but uh, I think I said a lot of important things, and I hope you're listening. And again, remember, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. Moving on up. Looking for a motor and a hood tomorrow. Bye. God bless you.